Hello, everyone. What I do is difficult to put into words. So I love for you to experience it with an open mind and an open heart. Nyanuai Stepping in front of you in my fullness to present my beauty to you, not minding what you think about me when you see me limp. Speaking in my second language, revealing my wisdom to you not minding if I stumble for words <coughs> or mix my languages. Gifting you sacred sounds to open what is for you to remember. Not minding if you see that we're all connected to each other. opening myself to you for singing to express my gift to you not minding that you sense the wisdom of your own body because I know what you've just received feeling a renewed sense of lightness and joy. Of true expansion. Interrupt what you do. And take another look at your life. And as you do that, I invite you to believe in your grandness as I believe in mine. Feel this interconnectedness Every day, I believe in my grandness. Grandness removed resistance and allowed me to tune into myself. 
to experience unfathomed possibilities. To rely on this interconnectedness, to be me every single moment. Let me tell you though, it wasn't always this way. I myself closed up when I was younger. Got to maybe the age of four or five years, noticing how people respond to my gait, how people respond to my speaking the truth, how they got afraid of hearing things. They couldn't understand, didn't want to hear, or were afraid to live. Silenced me. I became very, very shy, skinny legged. <laughs> Top of it, dyslexia. Even I pulled in more and more myself. Yeah, it's hard to feel yourself then. And your muscles become tight, they're not soft then anymore. And later, in the teenage years, when you become interested, or I became more interested in the answer, gender, I thought, who would love me ever? I'm not perfect. And that's how I lived, maybe the first 30 years of my life. Luckily, I came to, to the yes, and here, Slowly, I found my voice. People speak to you on the streets when you go shopping. And they hear my accent. Oh, where do you come from? There's an excitement. So I was nudged into speaking again. Another beautiful thing happened in this country. I found um, my studies, my passion. One was landscape architecture. And I loved it because I could live all my facets, all of them. My art, my uh, love for nature, the beauty of these flowers, animals, being with animals, touching them and being loved by them. But also the interest in people. But it went a step further after I found the way of expressing all my differences. You know, most of us, what we are told to, to, to center on, to focus into one thing and to do it and become an expert in that. But many of us are not this way. And it hurts us to dis have to decide which one we have to choose. It doesn't work somehow. And then we're not ever good in any because maybe we switch from A, B, C to D and maybe we put two together until the moment we say, no, I want to live all of my parts. That's a decision I did. I wanted to live every single part. So I did sports where I wasn't so good, Push, pushed aside, you know, when you're in groups. And I looked for paintings to paint for a room. And when I got, I found a place First I started to paint a little bit and then a little bit more and I could stay longer time in that studio. There was some magical thing happened because I decided to heal me. I had art, um, it was a layering art. So through la layering these uh, acrylics and this paper and the oil, I also could understand all of my layers. So it was not just what I'm doing, but what I'm all about. Yeah, so what are you about? You're very complex. And another beautiful thing, while I was painting, I came from college. At that time, you didn't have computers. It just started. We did all these draftings, layers of paper on top of each other on a big table, sitting there until midnight. Um, so I, that's how I started painting. And then with time, the movements got larger and larger 
And then I painted on five by eight foot paintings and I could dance and move and put music on. So I found myself, the expression of me, throughout my body. I loved it. And as the moment when I was opening up, I moved to Germany with my family. <laughs> and on a move over there, the truck with all my art supply and my paintings ready to go to a European gallery disappeared. It was a typical fire. Fire you see when your little child draws a painting of the uh, truck, the tires, and one big flame. That's how the truck on the autobahn burned down. Nothing was left, just the base of the truck. I was devastated. What do I do now? I laid in the garden, I think three months. Luckily, I had the sun to connect to as I laid there asking questions. I did know, though, it was something bigger in that. I don't know if the energy, because they're energetic drawings, or was something new to come. And something new was to come. It took two years, though. All of the supplies I never got back. I found the little case with plant pigment watercolor. I started painting with that. A friend invited me to come to an esoteric trade show, and I came along, and I had these little paintings. I was sitting there while she was working, and I noticed how people were reacting to these channel drawings, putting them on their chin, uh, on their forehead, on their heart, or men putting them into their pockets. I said, oh, there's more. There's a new way of expressing. So this new way was also my new way, a simpler way, a lighter way, less complex. But it was me. It was my style, tiny paintings. Not it took a minute, two or three, and not three months. And also that moment when I figured that out at that trade show, something else happened. I said yes to myself, and then suddenly my song came. Someone who held my hand, and I sang, I started singing, and um, I was thrown out, <laughs> out of singing class <laughs> in high school. The last two years, I loved it because I had time for myself when everyone had two hours of music class. I had to think of this Mr. Perron, I still know his name, <laughs> his beard. But I sing now, as you heard before, sometimes very angelic, masculine, sometimes, sometimes languages from all different realms. So I found a way to express myself. So please, never ever give up in your dreams. You know it within very deeply. That's the moment that will come for you to be you. That's important. Same as I'm, why I'm standing right here now. There was a dream I would speak to many people live. It's easy on the radio. Yeah, you sit at home, it's easy, you don't help to some healing. Maybe at the beginning it wasn't so easy, I also had to work myself up. And that's the same, I encourage you, as with the singing then. I was so in shock that these tones came out. At the first time I sang, the first few months, only um, in the uh, showers. Later, I invited friends, my shamanic friends, if they would listen on phone calls, conference calls. And then I invited people in English so I could practice my English and sing. <laughs> and then suddenly, the radio was there. But even with the radio, there was an intention. I set out, I wanted to share this song with the world. So whatever you have, there's something within you you want to share. And you may think it's impossible, but it's not. Take it easy. Sometimes we don't have to push it through. If it's easy to push, then go fast, quick, as you're taken, run, 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 run. But most of the time, it doesn't come this way. 
you go step by step, and then maybe sometimes it goes a little quicker, and then there's a hold. You may have to go backwards, and then you can push on again. And then suddenly your body moves you, moves you forward. So listen to your body. Listen to it very, very clearly. When does it feel expanded, and when does it contract? To stand like this in front of people was difficult. Now at this point where it is so natural for me to stand here. It doesn't feel difficult for me. Someone wants an even to come in. <laughs> he doesn't want to miss the show. <laughs> yeah? Maybe I should go invite him, but someone is running an opening. So again, start and do it, believe it, and set an intention line, an intention, and let it go. And this vision you have of living your passion, think about it of it pulling you as well. So sometimes it is us moving forward to it stepwise, and other times it just pulls us. That's very fast. You get moved really quickly. And I encourage you to hold on in those moments when you think, no, it doesn't feel right. Your surrounding doesn't want to follow. And then you just wait until your body feels, no, they have settled. Or they have tuned into what you want. And as you move out of it, you f feel that your surrounding Let's go of everything as well. So that one day, with whatever your spiritual identity, your spiritual purpose is, you can stand here or somewhere else, or sit somewhere and write, or paint, and do exactly what you love to do. And it feels at ease. You feel at ease inside, light, happy joyful. And you just feel like you're yourself. Please live this uniqueness. And every moment you live this uniqueness, <coughs> your difference to the others, it is an invitation to the other to live theirs. And this I love to see for this whole world. We, together, supporting each other, living ourselves. Thank you very much. <laughs>